Stav, Abby and Matt, the B105 Breakfast Show. Hello, everybody. Thank you for downloading today's podcast. Yes, indeedy. Carl Stefanovic joins us from mm-hmm. uh, Paris. Live from Paris, which mm-hmm. we find out he's taken his whole family there. And why wouldn't you? Mm. My wife would be the same if I said I was going to Paris. She said, not alone, she'd, champion. She'd like to go to Paris, wouldn't she? She would love Paris. Mm. I've been to the Champs de Soleil, where all the cool shops are. And they have people standing out the front in like um, suits. And you feel like you're not even allowed to go yeah. in. Did so you do the Milan Rouge? Yeah, we walked past it. We didn't go inside. You didn't go and do it before? We went to John Lennon's, um, is it John Lennon's or maybe Jim Morrison's? Jim Morrison's uh, gravestone. Um, walked across that bridge with all the padlocks on it. Oh, yeah. Had a fondue. Lovely. How long did you spend there? Uh, three or four days. Was this your honeymoon? No, it wasn't. After it was before? Because we went, uh, I took Cat home to Scotland, and it's just a hop, skip, and a jump. We did the channel, the, the, the very fast train through the channel. Oh, oh yeah. cool. That was cool. Yeah, but our apartment, we were in this tiny little um, apartment because that's just how it is in Paris. I do yeah. want to tell you that. Uh, and the air conditioning was broken and it was like 45 degrees in there. Yeah. And you'd look out and it was like freezing and you were just like boiling. You we couldn't even touch each other. It was like, it's a city of love, but get away from me. Oh, so when you say, when you say broken, it, the heat was too high. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it was cold uh, outside. Oh, right. I was for, like, really? Um, I didn't imagine it thought it would get that hot. We asked for um, reception to fix it, and they sent us a pedestal fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bloody hell. Mm. Uh, well, uh, stick around. Carl's going to give us the uh, info that's going on in Paris. Um, let's get into it. Here is today's podcast. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby, and Matt. The winner of the TV Week, Gold Logie, Carl <laughs> The Olympics are live and free. Channel 9, 9 Jam 9 now is where you can watch all the action. And, of course, you can see uh, this man sitting right in front of the Eiffel Tower this morning on the Today Show, Carl Stefanovic. Good morning. Opposite end of the day, guys. Uh, I, I slightly feel sorry for you. <laughs> Thank, uh, you. But, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I've had a full dinner, I've been to three pubs, and I'm ready and raring to go. That's the same as when you do it in the morning here, though, isn't it, Carl? It is true. There's no difference. This is like Logies every night in Paris. What does it do? Does it, does it flip your day around? So how does it work? What time do you shoot the show, and then when do you go to bed? It must be a bit confuddling for a while. It is. That's why you just do your best to drink your way through it. Um, so it's 9 o'clock at night. We're on set here. We're on air at nine thirty, um, and then we go through until one a.m. Wow! Um, so we've got we've got a little bit of daylight now until about ten ten thirty, um, and then the Eiffel Tower kind of lights up, and that gets through until one. Um, and then it lights out, and we're up um, during the day to, to do filming for other shows and our shows. Wow. So it's it's pretty full on, but it's it's also great fun. Paris is uh, you know it's shining. Um, it's just a fabulous city of the best times and and the worst. So <laughs> it's great to be here. I know it is work trip, obviously, of course. You're working really hard. But have you got your family there? Because we were talking the other day about how hard it is when you go away and it is for work, but they just see the good parts, like you said, of you just having a beer, and you're like, it's really really hard. Yeah, no, no, um, there's no way that my wife is going to let me come to Paris without um, coming <laughs> yeah. along. So, yeah. um, <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of nodding off at about two, and the four-year-old's up at about 6, 6.30, just when the sun creeps its way over the Eiffel Tower. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a beautiful thing, you know, to get your ears rubbed um, at that hour of the morning. <laughs> and it, it is it is lovely, though. It's such a, a special thing to have them here because the Olympics is, is a special occasion. Yeah. Um, and I just love it. And there's so much going on around the city that, that I won't get to experience. So for me, it's just a wonderful, a wonderful time for, for them to, you know, to, to go and do that while I'm working. Just make sure you let the wife know, mate, that um, that's stock standard now. So when you have to go to Emerald for some sort of outside broadcast, <laughs> yeah. she's definitely got to come to that too. <laughs> She's picking and choosing which one she comes to. <laughs> yeah, she just yeah. wants to do the, the, the Summer Olympics and the Winter Olympics yeah. uh, until Brisbane 2032. So mm-hmm. it's yeah. all good in the hood. Uh, that, I can't wait, honestly. You know, I mean, when you look at Paris and what they're doing here, um, it does make that stadium that Brisbane released yesterday. It does. Um, oh, you know, it's yeah. a little yeah. unremarkable. Um, but, but Brisbane, the vibe around it is, is going to be extraordinary. Um, and you guys, I know, will be, you'll be so pumped for it. And I am looking ahead to that eight years just going, wow, it's, it really is the biggest show in the world. Um, so we really need to get our act together. You'll still be doing the Today Show by then? 
probably. I mean, I can't really get on any other show. <laughs> <laughs> There's heaps of options, Carl. <laughs> they won't let me. They won't let me. Um, but I'm absolutely um, loving it, and uh, just just having the opportunity to be here, for example, and have three and a half hours of, of TV mm. um, this week, and then Sarah and I swing on to Olympic coverage next week. Um, it, it's it's just a, a dream job, uh, and we we feel really fortunate. Let's talk about that stadium because I did see that render yesterday. It's, um, a, it's a boutique. It's the smaller stadium no, that they're going to have yeah. since it's the nineteen twenty something. It is yeah. embarrassing. They've taken a turd. They've flicked a bit of glitter on it, and then they've crossed their fingers and hoped that people wouldn't notice. Yeah, because everyone goes cost of living. I, I get that times are really tough, but then mm. if you're going to say yes to a world event, right. you have to actually put it on. Yeah. And you've got to think about the legacy that it provides. Normally, it, what would happen after yeah. would be you'd have the infrastructure. Mm. Yeah, and I agree with you. You guys, one hundred percent. Look, this is our this is our time. Brisbane's come of age, um, and the Olympics is the perfect place to to show the world that it has come of age. If you're going to do some shit shit Olympic stadium, um, then then you may as well just give it up. I mean, it makes me so angry when you look at the opportunity um, that the Paris is. You know, Paris has done in a really smart way. Um, the Stade de France just up the road. Um, it's a capacity stadium. Yes, it was like the Gabber in the way that it was built, but um, they've made alterations all around the city um, mm. to really key locations. Um, you do not want to mess this up. Mm. Um, and, and it's so vital, not just for, for the city as it exists now, but for all those young people who are going to watch the Olympics for the first time mm. uh, during this Olympics and then go, right, I want to make... Brisbane 2032, a home Olympics, because they don't come around very often. No, no. Um, so f- just for those purposes, uh, I just feel that, that we have to, as a state and a country, do what we need to do to make it a great Olympics. Yeah, but uh, by, otherwise, by, what's the point? By 2032, we'll be 3D printing stadiums. You know, everyone needs to chill. <laughs> yeah, remember, we used to think that would be on 2000. <laughs> yeah. The stuff that will be achieved. Yeah, I mean, Where's the, the hoverboards? Yeah, yeah, we'll be uh, fine. Look, and, and I get I get austere government and, and, and all that that we're going through at the moment, but however we do it, we cannot let this opportunity to have the eyes of the world looking at Brisbane in 2032. It's worth so much to us, um, you know, as a, as a city and a state, uh, for, not just for tourism, but for big business and, and everything. Everything will flow from there. We just need to get our shit together and absolutely yeah. do it right. I just think it's funny because it's the same politicians that were going on socials crying that Taylor Swift didn't come to Brisbane because there wasn't any stadiums, yeah. you know? I'm like, well, what was it? Your daughter wanted tickets then and now it's not good enough for the world stage? <laughs> exactly. And, and look, there, these people are rolling into town, um, like Lady Gaga, yeah. Queen Dion, I've I'm cycling around town because it's the best way to get around and you can do it without a helmet on. It's just so free. Um, and I went past the hotel and there's like thousands of people out the front. I mean, there's a, just a great vibe here. Um, and Snoop Dogg is in the next yeah. booth to me. Wow. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm down. You can smell him or? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Having said that, who thought it was a good idea to give Snoop Dogg a torch? Um, you know, he's, he's not going to rip a big blunt out, just light that bad boy up off the well, Olympic torch. Well, apparently, the, 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 you know, the, the reefer matches the, the torch. Um, he's just going nuts. <laughs> but that's so interesting, too. Like, even NBC, this conservative American broadcaster, they have Snoop Dogg doing the opening ceremony because it's just reaching new audiences. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I, I can't wait to see him. I've interviewed him a couple of times, and he's just the loosest unit you know, um, in the history of the world. But he's just great fun to be around. You you said that you're driving, you know, riding around on a bike. We are hearing the headlines because we do watch you guys every morning. We've got it in here in the studio. The headlines that you know the, the uh, Aussies can't wear their uniform out and about. Yeah, is it a feeling of unsafe when you're riding around? I think it's not not when you're riding around, but you do. It's like any big city these days, and yeah. Paris has certain elements of it. You just need to be aware of and be careful of. There's a lot of security here. Like the the Johnny Whoppers on every corner, fully armed to the teeth, so you know they're, they're itching to you know to get involved in some kind of you know <laughs> scrap um, if someone <laughs> steps in the wrong direction. I, I mean, I'm a person who feels safer in that environment, so um, I, like I'm, I'm I'm completely okay with it. It's just you've got to be careful, yeah. um, you know, at certain times of night. So, I mean, it's just uh, like, you know, it, it'd be like being in New York or whatever. Mm. Um, if, you, if you're in the wrong part of town at the wrong time, then yeah. something's going to happen to you, you know. But otherwise, I feel completely and utterly safe. 
Well, mate, um, great to talk to you. We better let you get back to your show this morning uh, as well. And um, yeah. if Snoop Dogg hands you anything to nibble on, don't take it because I'll well, actually no, do take it. That'll be good to watch. No, I'll be taking it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah just send us a text <laughs> so we can make sure we're watching. Another giggling yeah. video going great. viral. <laughs> <laughs> great to talk to you guys. Enjoy the Olympics, huh? Good Thanks, on you, mate. Carl. Thank you so much. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby, and Matt. Dear Abby, sometimes in life, sh- gets real. And that's when you need Abby to help. I'm trying to help you. Is this more common than we think? People living double lives. Like Batman? Not like Batman. Okay. Not for the greater good. Mm. But just, ow, logistics. I can't get my head around it. If you've got a dilemma, you can send it in. Dear Abby at B105.com.au. This one is, hey, Abby. I met a guy at work that seemed to be all that. We started at a run club at work. We've got a run club oh, here. Do we? We do. Yeah. Tuesdays, Tuesdays 11 a.m. I keep saying I'm going to go, but anyway, that, this is not. <laughs> this run club? It's not, <laughs> this is not that run club. Everyone's like, I don't want to go to run club anymore. No, no. So it started. Are you sure they're not just running away from you? Come here, darling. <laughs> so it was started at a run club at work, and then it moved into private lunchtime walks and talks and lunches and car catch-ups. Mm-hmm. She's done a wink, wink. <laughs> Six months on, and a co-worker who is aware that we are very much together sh- said I should be careful as she believes he's got two phones and has a few other red flags. I was a little bit dismissive saying, let's not talk about these red flags. You're just jealous. Mm. But I was like, mm, you know what? That's not going to be the case because on his screensaver is a really cute photo of him and I together out for lunch. And I thought, well, he's not going to be lying if he's displaying that on his phone. Oh, true. Here's the thing. He said that he was separated from his wife and living with his sister and her family and had his kids on the weekend, hence why we didn't actually do much on the weekends together. We spoke about it often. We even spoke about us moving in together once the divorce was through. He even asked me if I would join him for a meeting with his divorce lawyer because he was really feeling quite nervous about it. He ended up having to cancel it last minute because one of his kids was sick and he had to pick them up from school, so we didn't go. I was curious after my workmate said it because you always start thinking it in the back of your phone about uh, back of your mind about the two phones. So I searched for his ex wife online, and there you have it. She's posted new photos of them last weekend. What the? It's all, it's all the lies of we've moved out and all that. None of that has happened at all. I confronted him about it. He didn't even lie at this point and said it's really, really complicated and he still wants to see me. Screw that. Mm. Honestly, who has lived a complete double life with two phones and two really different identities? Here he is at work, the man about town, seeing a new girl. But the thing is, we both live at North Lakes. Like we would have bumped into each other. Mm. Has two people, have people ever been dealt with this? And for anyone that's done it, why? Maybe they are separating though. No, oh, you, you've got to be separated. To what? If you've da- like as as a girl, yeah, who dated someone who said that, oh, my crazy ex girlfriend just keeps calling, mm. and we're totally not together. But I'm just crashing at my friend's house. Mm. What an idiot I was! That mm. is such a lie. Yeah, and no, they were still together the whole time. Mm. And then I was like, oh. And, you know, it's when you painted out to be the other girl and you had no idea, yeah. there's such a range of emotions because you're like, well, I've cheated on her, really, mm. and I've messed well, her over. Well, no, you, you haven't if you didn't know. If mm. you made the decision to sleep with a married man, then that's on you. But if you didn't know, yeah. you can't take that guilt on. Yeah, but you do You do feel, just feel like, what? Yeah. And especially when someone else messages you and said, do you know that, you, like, and the message was just mind-blowing. Like, do you know that you're with my boyfriend? Not being the first time and won't be the last. And I was like, what? Ooh. Is that like she's okay with it then? No, she wasn't okay with it. And then I messaged him just going, what, is this true? And then she's like, I've warned you not to contact him. I'm like, yeah, but you know what I mean? Like it's the first information I had for it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it seems like this guy has been hiding his family from his workplace as well because – that's a pretty hard thing to do if you work somewhere well, and no not, one to know you're that you're not, married. Though, because you're like, I'm married, but I'm separated. Mm. Not everyone comes well, in here yeah, and declares, so. just so you know. Yeah. It's been four weeks or six months separated from my wife living at my sister's. Like, he's not saying Would that he be didn't good have if they ex. did send a memo out, though, letting people know <laughs> so you don't ask awkward questions. That's true. That's very true. Yeah. We should have doctor in that. We should. Yeah. Would you like to go first with your public news? No, I'm good at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, 131060, this. Uh, girl's feeling a little bit silly at the moment for what she should have realised she's saying, but it happens to a lot of people and there are a lot of cunning humans out there 
men and women, 13, 10, 60, did someone do this to you? Mm. Did someone run a double life and you had no idea? What red flags did you miss? This is just a guy that wanted to have an affair, right? Mm. Of course. No intentions to leave his wife. Just wanted to have a bit on the side. Mm. It's very brazen to do it at work. And see, that's why run clubs. No good. No. No, that's not the motto that's of this. That's what I'm I taking agree, out of this, yeah. But, but, but imagine finding out, like, if she had stayed with him or moved in or something along those lines, yeah. and he's like, look, like, just so you know, weekends, like, you know, with the family or whatever. Mm. Yeah. Well, you hear about people running double lives all the time when they work as FIFOs and they've got a family mm. in one when city. When you get names confused. Yeah. Also, in the same suburb. Yeah. Like... I mean, I know North Lakes is going ahead it's and big. expanding, but yeah, still. going to bump into each other at Ikea. Of course. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Is that the only store you know there? Costco. Yeah. <laughs> Village Motors. Yeah. Okay, what are you yeah. in a family car for? <laughs> oh, we're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the father? Anonymous in Kalanga. <laughs> What's your story? Hi. Hey. So um, I am actually the wife's position mm. where about six years ago, um, my partner and I were trying for a baby. I was about five months pregnant with our now daughter and I actually found out from the mistress's best friend um, Mm. that they were together. She found out about me at the same time as well. Um, The day that we both found out, they had both actually booked a trip to Bali for a week (gasps) prior to my birthday. Your husband Um, had booked a, a week away? Yeah, yep, with her and made out to me that he was going away with a friend from work. Mm -hmm. Wow, so what about, Um, because this is why I just go to logistics, how much time was he spending with her, like out of the house and what was his reasons? So he shift work, so Mm. I'm guessing during night time he would probably be at hers and every second weekend because she has kids herself as well. Mm. Um, And then actually after that moment kind of blew up a little bit when we both found out. And then a year later, after we had just had our daughter as well, mm. I found out again from her best friend that they were still seeing each other behind my back. Wow. Um, so that, so that yeah. you, you stayed together with him? We did. did? Okay, yeah. yep. So I tried to work it out with him, thinking from my end everything was fine. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, it kind of blew up for about three Three more years after that, her and I were in forth talking to each other while he was manipulating the both of us still saying, no, I'm not with her or things yeah, like that. just the lies um, and lies. And I guess you you wanted to believe him. You look back now and you go, oh. Mm. Yeah, I kind of look back and go, what was I thinking? And she does well as well. Um, and, I mean, it comes to a, a bit of a happy ending. I do still need to deal with him. Mm. But her and I, she's also left him as well. I actually still talk. So. <laughs> it's, 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 it's always the way. It's always the way, isn't it? You're like, you had something in common, hating him. <laughs> what was yeah. his time management like in general life outside of that? Like, Was it good was for it him good? to be able to leave a, or, lead a double life? Or were you surprised that he could handle that? Um, we were both like the mistress and I were both quite surprised that he could deal with it. Um, we still think about this, how he got away with it. How, how did we not see the mm. signs so clearly? Yeah, men aren't as useless when sex comes into it by the <laughs> sounds of it. Yeah, I so am. you just got the wrong motivation. Yeah. Yeah. So organising kids' parties and stuff like that, you, you could do it. Yeah, you we, can multitask. You yeah. just don't have... The motivation to. This isn't mm. about that. This but is it about is the true. You have to admit that, right? Mm. It is true. So maybe change our motivation. <laughs> I take that back. Yeah, it's an I odd one to, yeah, for a. See how quick party. you're thinking That's now? What See how quick some you're on your toes? Would say, uh, but not these men. I didn't even say it, mate. <laughs> yeah, you did. Anonymous is, on, <laughs> Anonymous is on the line. You made me say it. <laughs> Why the boys are fighting in the background from Park Ridge. What's your thoughts? What's happened with you? Um, so I have been both people oh, in this okay. situation mm-hmm. in that I have been the person that he cheated with yep. and then was cheated on wow. by the same person. Um, was a FIFO worker mm-hmm. and started a relationship with him. He told me he and his wife were separated, that they were living under the same roof because there was no point him having a house when he was never home. Mm. Um, which did make sense when you stopped and thought about it. Yeah. Um, we he he painted her as this absolutely crazy person who he couldn't stand and just wanted to be away from. Um, we had a relationship. Eventually, he and his wife did separate. We moved in together. 
and within nine months of us moving in together, he'd started a relationship with somebody else. Wow. Wow. Oh, yeah. And, and is it true, when, the whole thing of, like, keeping phones <laughs> private, you know? like yeah. yeah, I was never allowed to touch his phone. Yeah. He was very secretive with his phone. And obviously being FIFO, I was at work when he was at home, so he had plenty of time on his hands. Wow. So that's what it is, isn't it? That's your time management too mm-hmm. much. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. Thank you to everyone who called with their stories. If anyone wants to reach out later of someone who's actually done it, mm-hmm. we have a few questions about time management. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You can remain anonymous yes. mm-hmm. as well. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Matt was trying to insist that cash be be king. Yeah, he's been on that for a while now. And every time there is an outage of something, he's like, see. see? And then I kind of go, ooh. Maybe you are good at tech and you brought it down just to be able to prove that cash <laughs> is king. No, you do like pie. having cash and but you're very old school. My husband loves it as well because he's like, this is, you know, you spend more. You spend more if you don't have cash. Well, mm. The main thing for me is now, and I can understand it, businesses are passing on the card fees to us. So even insert, though you might think. That's what I learned from Matthew. Insert. He's always insert. Good at that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's only like couple of cents here and there, but it all adds up. And the other thing is, if you're not paying that fee, then the shop pays that fee. So I want the $10 I go over, spend, to Mm. go to the shop. I should should explain the inserting. If it's in a debit card, Mm. if you tap it, I Mm. didn't realize you still get a fee. So if you insert it Mm. and take a little bit longer in the line, but that's cool, Mm. then you don't have to pay that fee. But here's how are we supposed to teach kids? Or are we not? Because they're not going to be using cash. So they say eventually it's going to be a cashless society. Mm-hmm. And even the Barefoot Investor said it's going to turn around and we're going to have to pay extra for cash. Oh, right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, because That's that ridiculous. person... Well, that person has to go to the bank and yeah. spend their time lining up, it's speaking to someone money. going, what would you like to do at the bank? I'd like to put cash in. Oh, well, that's weird. I okay, shouldn't, no worries. You should not have to pay someone yeah. to get to your own money. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, it's stupid. I know. But have then... No one's giving cash to kids. Mm. So at schools, they have a card for the high schools Mm. where that is the card that you use for expenditures. And Mm. it blows my mind because my son goes to school really early because he does the sports and he hasn't got time for breakfast and he'll get like a bacon egg roll because the canteen's open Mm. before. Mm. That's great. So he has a card. Now, I want him to get the message of how much money is on there, but I also don't want to have a call early in the morning going, oh, it's been declined. Mm. So I have an automatic top up on there Mm. and I can see what he's ordered and he's very responsible, but the middle child's coming in and he's not. Oh yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I was driving to work today. I saw the dollar mite shooting up in the gutter. (laughs) (laughs) But you can't teach them about it because if they've they got don't a card, see it, they can't see it. And I, I've been refusing to get a debit card for him. Like he's got the mm. school card, but I'm not getting a debit card. All his friends have it. You said Rory has one. Rory's got a card, yeah. But then she doesn't know how much is. You know what I mean? She, does, not, she always asks how much have I got in my account. But they're not. And he says it's a black Amex bag. Just tap away. <laughs> we, we live in Barden. You're fine, sweetheart. Just don't use it on the helicopter. I already pay you. But I, I don't I, want to I, double up. I, I guess that's the thing that has to happen now. Is that's how we have to teach them. What they. You have to keep asking how much. I just mm, saying it, they keep don't checking you at your balance. Yeah, but it's constantly topped up. Well, that, we don't do that in Baden. She has to earn it. <laughs> so, how many times has she gone there and it's been declined? Um, so that's the real lesson. <laughs> well, well, that's because we would check if she, if she goes. I, I'm going to get tuck shop today. How, how much money do I? And have do you account? restrict it or say this is your limit this week? Yeah, hundred percent. So, then how much yeah. limit does she have a week? She only gets tuck shop once a week. And what? There's no limit for how much. No. Nah, well, within the however much she's got in her account. Because then my son is like, oh, I bought someone a drink. No, bruh. But then she's yeah. only You're ever got like $30 people. in her account at any right. given time. And then when it's out. Well, she gets $10 a week pocket money, so it's not ever out, out. Or no, if it is out, out, then she doesn't have any money. Yeah. But I know what you're saying. The difference is when you look at cash in your hand, and it'll be the same. You go yeah. out on the grog when you're younger and you yes. take cash. Mm. And you think to yourself, am I going to... Am I going to shout around? And you've only got 25 bucks left. Now, I know this is, a, I'm talking a long time ago when you get two for one basics. You can't do that any, anymore. But you were like, nah, I'm going to hide in the background because I've only got 25, 25 bucks to get me through. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to get a cab home and hopefully 
Some Digital with money me. just doesn't have that same, oh, wow, I can't go any further. Because when no. you've got the credit cards, a lot mm. of people, I know when I first got my credit card, mm. I was like, this keeps going. But the- and I would already gone over and all the <laughs> interest that I had to pay. Yeah. Mm. But that's to us. This is another generational thing where they don't know any different, so that's how they'll do it. And they'll look at us going, look at you oldies trying to fob off your cash. But I don't think it's working for them. No like, meaning. if I was able to order Uber Eats when I was young, mm. poor. That would yeah. be great. I've got, you know, like I understand how it's harder for people to save money because we're busier and when you've got the convenience, you go, just once a week. What but this saying? time it's a stressful week, so I'll do it twice a mm-hmm. week. You're saying I'm right, hey? We should all be paying cash? <laughs> Is that what you're saying? I thought you Ooh. did have a point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how much cash have you two got on you at the moment? None. None at all? No. I don't no. have my wallet. <laughs> You don't I, have your wallet. I don't have my wallet. Use it's on my phone. phone. Oh, that's... I'm, See, I know, but this is my thing. If I had cash, I... No, I don't have my I'm wallet. running low. I've got 30 on me. What about you guys out there? Any of you got cash? I've got $2 on my desk in case I want to use the vending machine. Why don't you that's give me it. 20 and I'll see how long it lasts? <laughs> no. <laughs> Eden. <laughs> <laughs> the B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Excellent guitar riff. Uh, so, you know, the worst thing about the internet is nothing's ever really gone, is it? Oh, Your yeah. humiliation is there for all to see. And the worst thing about it now is you're seeing generations and you're seeing things that were once big yeah. and then they're being rediscovered again. You're watching Couch Time on YouTube again? You can't find it. I've looked. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> on the VHSs. Yeah, I know. It's just yeah. funny. Everything's there forever, but someone was determined to take those down. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a show that Stav was on, by the way. That's right. Wanna, yes, yes. That Hugely clear. popular. And um, <laughs> <laughs> this one comes from all the way back in 2017, but it's just resurfaced and it's got 10 million hits. And it's all to do with one Donald J. Trump. And his speechifying. I don't know if you guys remember this because it was it was a long time ago and it was kind of dead and buried. And now it's come back and all the younger people are going, what? I can't believe I'm only noticing this for the first time. And I don't know. I, I, would, I would tend to think unconventionally because I don't think he would trust anyone else. I think that Trump would write his own speeches. No. You don't reckon? No chance. Hmm. No, I reckon he's got someone just as arrogant as him. Yes, that's what I think. I think they're like, no, mate, you're you're the man and stuff like that. I think he would go and go, you know what I'm trying to do? I want to change. That's not how he talks. He wants to change a little bit and they would try to incorporate one word for him or something. But no. I reckon he'd have a white piece of paper that would say, China, China, immigrants, wall, China. And then he just goes pinging off wherever he wants to. Yeah, maybe. Um, But he has caught the rancor of some people who are fans of certain movies because apparently... In one of his speeches, he has plagiarised a famous movie speech, and that is the fantastic Reese Witherspoon's seminal film, Legally Blonde. And, of course, because Legally Blonde is on film Mm -hmm. and someone did film the speech, you have the ability to put them back to back and see if he actually has done this. And it seems to me pretty clear that he has. Have a listen. We take our next steps into the world. You must go forth into the world. It is with passion. Passion. Courage of conviction. Courage in your conviction. And most importantly. Most importantly. Have faith in yourself. Be true to yourself. We did it! I did it. It's pretty. Yeah, that's a writer, yeah. like, screwing him up there. Reckon? Yeah, 100%. Remember uh, could there was be his that favourite com- film. Remember there was a comedian who was uh, annoying his script writers, so then they plagiarised another comedian? Yeah, that was uh, James Gordon. Uh, yeah. James Gordon, yeah. Yeah, uh. yeah. And they're like, Haha, we'll get you this. Surely he's seen the movie, though. You Trump think? sits down and watches Legally Blonde? I reckon he'd love it. Mm. Don't you think? No, I don't. No, what do you think he sits down to watch? Himself. Yeah, <laughs> I would say that he'd be the same. Home Alone 2. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And reruns of The Apprentice. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but that is, yeah, that's a script writer, I think, who's got, yeah. got a bit of poetic license there. It hasn't happened just the once, though. And this one's a little bit more scary and a little bit more accurate because he has apparently lifted from the fantastic movie Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight Rises, starring Tom Hardy as Bane. Uh, he has ripped a little of Bane's speeches off uh, in that one as well. Have a listen. We are not merely transferring power from one administration to another, but we are transferring power from Washington, D.C., and giving it back to you, the people. And we give it back to you. (laughs) 
the people. For too long, a small group in our nation's capital has reaped the rewards of government while the people have borne the cost. The oppressors of generations who have kept you down with lots of <laughs> opportunity. I just can't That's wait. When he, uh, I'd like to see if he does win and he gets up in his inauguration speech and says, what we do in life echoes in eternity. <laughs> <laughs> the B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. I was at the tennis courts and one of the dads was complaining that all the kids have started talking like they're in jail. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like the stuff they're saying and the handshakes and they're calling each other bra. And they were all saying how inappropriate it was. And I just, I was a little bit quiet, but I was just nodding because I wanted to be cool with mm. them, you know. And then my brother, my son comes up to me and goes, hey, you got my water bottle, brah? And I was like, mm. nah, brah, if you're not going to get it yourself. And then I looked over and I went, oh, I'm sorry. Mm. But I just, I mm. wanted to be, I have to be in. Yeah, you got to be in. Dad me up, brah. Got to be a cool bra. mum. Yeah, like I got, I got three boys. I can't be on the outer. My no. husband's on the outer. Jeez, it's funny. Oh, he wouldn't keep up at all, would he? No, he doesn't. He gets very confused mm. with our conversation. Meanwhile, yeah. no one can understand a bloody word he's saying. Well, yeah, I know. I know, right? <laughs> he's his back. But I, it's, you know, I was watching and I was kind of like, you know, stop selling. Because he was having a bit of a tantrum. Mm. And it's like, it, mm. if I talk his lingo, mm. then he kind of gets me a bit yeah. more. But do they, Although he's he going to be like so it? embarrassed by this. Well, just to say, Xander hates it No, he I hates it, it, but you've got to use it correctly and you've got to not overdo it. So mm. let's just say the tennis court is full. He's probably the youngest. A lot of them are mm. older or whatever. And I could see him like go to hit it. And I was like, stop selling. And then I just walk away. And you could see him go, oh, I'm going to have to stop. Otherwise, right. she's going to go a little bit too hardcore. Mm-hmm. So you use it properly. I, I use it to embarrass him. Yeah, you no, know, you can't do it like that. <laughs> you I, can't do that. Just little stop things. Skibbity. Little things where like he'll come in and he'll go, oh, what's for dinner? And I'll go, tacos. And I'll go, W? And he goes, yeah, W. Mm-hmm. Is that cool? Because that's W in the chat. Oh, right. Which well, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Winning, right? It's yeah. like winning. Oh, right. You know how they, so if you're playing a computer game yeah. and you're like, but this is, all I'm saying is this is ridiculous. And you know when someone's got teenage boys by the way they talk, but this is something that you brought to the table and mm. everyone's like, what the hell? Skibbity Toilet mm. is going to be made into a movie. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's a, a film and TV. It's got those little films, but. Yeah. <laughs> I said skip. What the heck is going on on you? On, on. There is parents' eyes twitching right now. I know, but it's in the works from Michael Bay. I know. He's a great director, right? (laughs) Okay. He makes pieces of crap, so it'll be perfect for him. Fine. Um, I said skibbity toilet to Rory the other day. It looked like I verbally slapped her. (laughs) Yeah. She was like, do not ever. Do you get the. Because they don't use them as much, do they? The girls? Yeah. I think they have their own different ones as well. What do they use? Oh, I wouldn't know. I know that they use um, preppy. That's preppy. And that means bad. Oh, that means bad. Yeah, I don't know. But they say it like it means like it's good. Right. Like, look at this outfit. Oh, that's so preppy. And I, I call it. Mm. Right, because preppy about, has a whole look. What about your thought story? You want to share that to the, with the table? What'd you do? <laughs> so I've got the, the photo of me and Esther on my phone. <laughs> See that? And she looks really hot in it. Yeah. And it, I showed it to Zandy. So I went, oh, look at that thought on the screen there. And he looked at me like I'd killed someone. I was like, do you know what that means? He goes, yes. Do you know what that means? I said, it means that hottie over there, doesn't it? He said, no, dad, you should Google it. What did you do? What was it? Uh, a woman who participates in lots of casual sexual activities. Yeah, That's so you got it right. Way to... <laughs> <laughs> that was what I felt like saying to him. <laughs> See, my, I hate it when I'm that hottie over there. I always oh, hate it when my kids are there, though, and they walk past and they're like, yeah. And you're like, stop saying it about your mum. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm mm. guessing they don't use that, do they, the girls? No. No. Which is, a gyat is, where it's like a, an ass that they like, oh. yeah. thick ass, but that's good. Mm. Yeah, it's not right. a bad thing. No, yeah. like, it's like for your fat, pretty hot and that. And do you know what mewing is? That's a mouth thing. <laughs> <laughs> your mouth thing, is it? Oh. Mm. Yeah. No, that, no, not that stuff. They don't go like that, they go uh, like this. Okay. Oh, why? I don't know. Well, well no, it's for a defined jaw, but yeah. they even do it just to say hi to each other on Snap. Oh, you just send videos of you mewing with different, like... We've got the explanation here. Mewing is a technique or posture that happens in the mouth. It can temporarily make your jawline appear more chiseled. But as advocates say, it can do much more than that and even permanently change your face. <laughs> Need another war, don't we? <laughs> that, the wind will change. That's, is yeah, that where yeah, the yeah, coming yeah, from? Yeah. Mm-hmm. See if you can throw it into a few conversations okay. today, all right? Yep, yeah, yep, we'll do. Yeah, uh, With Rory or just in general? Just in general. Okay. Yeah. Mm. 
You know when we should really do it? Ma- when you're in HR. <laughs> yes. oh, okay. I got a well, meeting again riz, bro. at 9.30. <laughs> hey, you thought? Huh? The B105 <laughs> Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Alpha Bucks, guys. We're going to play tomorrow, Friday, 26th of July. Here are three answers to your game at 7 and 8. 7, it's G, and some of your answers are gardenia, gymnastics, and great expectations. I read that. Wasn't all hopeful. Mm-hmm. And at 8, it's M, and some of your answers are Madagascar, mackerel, and Murray. Right up. See you tomorrow, guys. Stav, Abby, and Matt, the B105 Breakfast Show.